what's going on? I seem to be on a roll today. I've made several videos. I'm going to go ahead and do my first ever video response. This video response, uh, I'm glad to say it's going out to Athene uh, from the channel Athene Wins on his theory of everything. Now, why am I choosing this to do uh, this particular video to respond to? First of all, Athene is hilarious, and I want everyone that's on my channel to go watch him because he's freaking funny. Everyone that's on Athene's channel, I want to come watch me because I need a billion viewers just like he's got, and uh, that would be awesome. Here's another thing. It, it uh, Unlike his other videos, it's not a work of comedy. It's serious, and it has serious implications. It even has implications in our day-to-day -day lives. I find it extremely interesting. Number one, I want to expose you all to Athene and vice versa. I want Athene's people exposed to me. Number two, I find it interesting and different. Number three, which is also a classic reason people do video responses, it's because I disagree with a certain point or points. Now first of all, before I go to what I disagree with, I want to emphasize that there is a huge amount of intelligence behind this video. I can't emphasize it enough. The synthesis of information in here and how they break it down to such a simple level is amazing. Now, some people it may still be over their heads, but there's only so much you can do with this subject matter. Uh, it's just crazy, man. Let me get to the point. Consciousness. We tie it all together with a theory of consciousness. I agree with this theory of consciousness, but it is not the whole picture. It is part of the picture of consciousness. His theory of consciousness addresses experiential consciousness and the experiential self and it nails it to a T, I believe. However, the experiential self is not the complete self. Allow me to explain. At a certain point, he references uh, the drive to reduce cognitive dissonance. I would identify this as willpower. Here's the thing. He, he addresses this, but the implication is that it's a logical reaction, that it's somehow based on past experiences or even a uh, present experience um, I guess you would have to say a present experience since, since he dis disproves time as we understand it. But it's, but it's a reaction, a logically based reaction. I would disagree. I would say that irrationality, not rationality, is the unique human trait. I would say animals, nature, cosmological systems, quantum, all act logically, but the human being can act irrationality. This causes, this is what is the unique human trait. People t talk about the soul of a human. If you look at the word soul in the, in the Greek, it means animal life, animal life, physical animal life. The human soul is no different from the animal soul because we both have intelligence, emotion, hunger, these types of things. This is what the word soul is referring to. Spirit is different. Spirit is different from soul. And everyone screws this up. I cannot count the number of people that have been talking about the soul, meaning the spirit. Okay? Spirit's different. Spirit is the essence. A person's spirit is the essence that makes them unique. The theory of consciousness does not account for a person's spirit. It does not account for our individual uniquenesses. Let me, do, let me uh, show you where this individual uniqueness occurs. It occurs in our choices. Your choices are different than mine because of your unique spirit. This is not the experiential self. This is the willing self. This is the deciding self. This is the true self. You cannot control your experiences. Your experiences are controlled by outside forces. You uniquely control your decisions. If this was not the case, we would have no basis for legally persecuting people who make poor decisions, such as murder, etc. There, there it would be no logical reason for the existence of ethics and morality if there was not the implicit understanding that people are responsible for their own decisions and this comes from a decision-making self um, and uh, and like I said if you're religious or theological 
you can, uh, or spiritual, you can call this unique self the spirit. Otherwise, you can know it as the decision-making self, which needs to be different from the experiential self. So, in conclusion, this Athene's theory of everything rocks, man. It's awesome. And it nails to a T the experiential self, um, but it fails to account for the decision-making self, or it incorrectly accounts for it, because it implies that it's a rational or logical reaction to existing stimuli when we all know humans act act irrationally and really it's a unique trait by humans um, you know if you disagree that humans are uniquely irrational okay then you're proving that irrational irrationality exists because you're saying one thing I'm saying a different thing if we're both rational we would come to the same conclusion but if you're saying that irrationality in humans doesn't exist, we came to different conclusions, which implies that it does exist. So there's a quick little proof that humans are irrational. Uh, obviously, it's not bulletproof, but <laughs> uh, I can go on and make some different videos on my channel, maybe later, about the difference between a soul and a spirit. Uh, maybe I can make a more thorough proof about the existence of the unique trait of human irrationality. Um, but Athene, rock on, dude, and I hope you can incorporate the decision-making self into your theory of everything that would really be a huge step forward in my opinion. Take care, YouTube.